Recently, I watched the film Challengers and decided to dissect, commentate, and talk about it in three parts. I remember when the trailer was initially released and everyone was talking about how this film was going to be a threesome kind of movie, a stereotypical masculine love triangle if you will, where the two main characters fight to get the girl, essentially your average 2000s rom-com but this time it was directed by Luca Guadagnino. As a lot of people have said already, the trailer itself is highly misleading. If you try to understand the plot simply from the trailer, you couldn't get further from the actual story. The film centers around three elite tennis players, Tashi played by Zendaya, Art played by Mike Feist, and Patrick played by Josh O'Connor, who all come from quite different backgrounds. Tashi is implied to have come from a poor middle class family that couldn't afford to allow Tashi to join prestigious universities or study tennis like Art and Patrick did. She had to make her own dreams come true through hard work and persistence, which is exactly why tennis is her true love, as she puts it. Now, Art comes from a most likely upper-class family, who was rich enough to allow Art to attend prestigious events and boarding schools, but is still grounded enough in financial discipline to understand where their money comes from. Whereas Art's childhood best friend Patrick, who he met whilst boarding for tennis, comes from an extremely rich and elite family background. Yet later in life, Patrick essentially decided to sell himself to strangers in order to find a place to sleep every night, even though everyone is well aware that he most definitely has enough money but chooses to portray a poor persona, most likely as a defense mechanism against the responsibilities that come from being an adult, as Patrick seems to always be stuck in the past. I'm really disturbed by the fact that she could have been someone like me when we were teenagers. <laughs> When we're teenagers. Art and Patrick's relationship is one of the most popular dissections when it comes to this film. This is because of the highly sensual and affectionate nature the characters often take on, especially during the beginning of the film and during their teenage years. We see them hugging, touching, and often kissing each other in multiple scenes during this time period, but this could simply be to show us that they are indeed just close friends, which is what is implied. The main kiss between Art and Patrick when the three of them are hanging out in the hotel room together was instead initiated by Tashi herself showing us a glimpse into the power that Tashi has over the two boys, foreshadowing the later rivalry between the three of them and how Tashi is always the one making the decisions and commands in their relationship. Now since we've established that at the core of the film it is nothing more than a film about desire, class, and choices, this would mean that Art and Patrick's relationship only truly exists through that, and that the desire they may have for one another is no more than the shared desire they share for their preferred sport tennis. As much as Patrick and Art despise the repetitive nature of the sport by the climax of the film, they can't help but be drawn back to it time and time again, whether it's through Tashi, through competition, or through plane rivalry. The real love story of this film is the tennis itself, a shared love and bond for this sport, and Tashi explains this idea extremely well after she defeats one of her opponents after a match. About 15 seconds there we were actually playing tennis, and we understood each other completely. So did everyone watching. It's like we were in love. Just like she said, it's a bonding experience, but it's also a source of relief. And when that is taken away from Tashi is when the story really starts to unfold. The story where this love triangle becomes not just a metaphor, but a true desire to live through each other's lives vicariously. Ultimately, Challengers has little to nothing to do with sex or even sexuality, but instead highly focuses on the ideas of desire and choice, the desire to be better than one already is, and the desire to find happiness in an unexpected place. Tennis is the only thing that brings them all together, and that's exactly how the film ends, right where it begins in a shared moment. Now is it a good film? I'd say so. From the incredible cinematography to the fascinating direction and to the characters themselves, Challengers has proven itself to be a truly influential film in a sea of corporate garbage and unappealing remakes. So go watch the film if you haven't already, and tell me your thoughts and opinions on the characters and the ending in the comments below. And yeah, that's it.